Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is an interesting little item that I got. It's a Griffin Brook Motors motor. It's a S201 51Z, 50 cycles, type PROT. I don't know what that means. 230, 250 volts, rating continuous, single phase, 1420, 2.5 amps. But on top, it has another plate. And this one says, if we get a bit of a look at it. So up on top it says, Alcoza Blower. From William Alday and Company Limited, Alcoza Works, Stourport on Severn. So this is a blower from a little brazing hearth. It's a model HSP1, MC number 4362, model number, I don't know. Um, 5.2 cubic feet per minute at two and a half pounds, I think that's per inch. I can't, I can't quite make out what it says there. 1420 revs, vacuum, it doesn't say, and there's no other details for horsepower or displacement in cubic feet per minute. And have a look at the other side. It's got the pump on this end here with cooling fins all around. It's got a little kind of a chimney. Here, but of course it's not a chimney, it's a little air inlet. Actually, you could open that up and see what it's like in there. While I'm opening that, on the other end it has a red hose. It goes down to this aluminium regulator here. So I'll have a look at what that says in a second. I just want to wire it up and see if it'll do anything. Okay, so slackening that off doesn't seem to make any difference. I'm not sure what, what we're loosening there. I'll put that back on. It's a good old motor. It's got grease points on it on each end for the bearings. Let's have a look at this regulator. Stockport, England, Adapto Gas Limited. NVR50, seven bar maximum. So it's some kind of a regulator. A soldered mixture of bits of fittings and stuff there. A bit of copper pipe with a bit of soldered brass in the end. But I just want to see if it'll go. Um, have I turned it over? I haven't turned it over. Can't turn it over by hand. It's only a little end on it. You'd have to take it off to turn it over. So I started taking off this tape and then I thought I should make a video. So let's continue to do that. Oh, this wiring looks atrocious here. The rubber's all dead. I'm just going to take the rest of that off. I'll just cut it off. See there, that wire's all shredded up but luckily it's got all black and red so it's quite an old thing here luckily for me i can see where the wires go so it should be a simple matter of wiring it up so let's see about getting this little clamp off here that's loosening off all right and then if that's loose this might i might be able to um well i don't i probably don't need to actually but there's a little um that's all seized up in there a bit of tape as a gland it's a bit nasty so we've got an earth going up to this terminal up here we've got a neutral this is quite bizarre the cable is here <laughs> i think there's a botch job completely here these are black and red the cables here are a greater size than brown and blue so i have no idea what's going on there it's like they're jointed somewhere just within this little I'll pull that off and try and get them out from the other side. It's bizarre. Yeah, they're actually just that, that's taped joints there. They're just uh <laughs> Oh that's amazing. Okay, people have their own ways of doing things. I get a new cable and uh, wire it up. So I just have to remember that live is the one on the bottom here. piece of washing machine cable that uh, I can repurpose for this task. Let's get that neutral up there. I'll get this cable that I have here. Get the ends tidied up with this tool. This is one of the best tools around. Little cable end cleaner. Wire stripper. Now, I don't know if this works, although these motors are, I think, pretty great. They're amazing. They don't tend never to, well, they'll have issues. I had one issue with a different one with a stuck capacitor on it. 
you just fix it and then it's fixed, you know? Well, I know what I need to do. I need to thread it through this guy first. Otherwise, I'll have a bit of a problem on my hands. I have to unwire it and do it again. Get that clamp on there. Good and tight. Now, I'm not sure if I have enough cable. I should do, actually. Give these a twist, like this. Bring it down and around. Wash it back on. It looks like someone's been in here quite recently, because these washers don't look to be as old as the wiring, which is... I don't know why anybody would wire it like this with an old bit and a newer bit. It's very strange. Let's clamp that on. And these nuts aren't even tight, really. Maybe I loosened it earlier. Okay. Now we have no on off switch, so the plug will have to be the switch. So I'll run it through a floor switch uh, in a. Does that fit? No, it just doesn't fit. Will it go? I was kind of hoping this would just fit on. It does fit on there, that's okay. It's not great, but. Probably won't want to come off, but that's okay. So that's the way it was. We took that wire in there. It's got a big, big old rubber gasket on it. That's not going to seal properly, but that's not a problem really. Um, the nut for here, put that on. So I'm not sure if there's a capacitor. Well, actually there isn't a capacitor in it. I can see plainly that there isn't one. So there shouldn't be any issues with capacitor um, flyweights getting stuck or anything like that. Interesting paintwork. It's kind of like an enamel with a fleck of yellow and dark green on it. It's kind of kind of pretty in its own way. Okay, get that clamp back on here. Yeah, Brook Huds Brook Motors Limited from Huddersfield. It's quite amazing. Like I, I expect this to just work, and if it does, I could give it a shot of grease, but I'm not sure there could be a uh, problem in there with the veins that I presume it's some kind of arrangement with veins that uh, well scoop and put there it's not really a com well it is a compressor it's a, it's a pump so it'll be like a compressor pump I don't know what kind it is rotary I'm guessing in that case rather than up and down because it doesn't look like that it might be noisy the filter could be blocked that's another thing that may happen yeah just plug it in and see what happens right so I've got it going through this floor switch. This is uh, an extension cord with an additional, I think the live is just on a pedal switch. So let's give it a go. Put that down on the floor and we put some power in. That sounds absolutely fine. Wow, okay. Let's just see, there's some dust on the table there over around here, so let's see. Yeah. That sounds quite good too. So we'll look at this, I'll just put a piece of paper. That's it, there wasn't much to it. So that's it then. So if you want to know how to wire it, just go back in the video. It's pretty simple. Uh, oh, turn it back on again. <laughs> the regulator, I guess. I don't know if it works or not, but this just... It does work. It does work. It does work, yeah. So this would just sit in the forge and... Uh, You know, um, give you a bit of a bit of air to warm up the coals in your brazen hearth. A gr Griffin motor on a Alcoza blower, or the other way around. Any questions or comments, leave them below. 
might make a video of a brazing hearth in the future if I ever get around to building one. Thanks for watching. See you later.